But I was in college. I was on a track team at Oklahoma State University. And our track coach was a very well-known man named Coach Ralph Tate. Well, Ralph Tate had the ability to turn more shades of red and purple when he was mad than anybody ever seen in my life. Well, he had to be gone one day, and so he gave us instructions on how to run through our daily workout. And you would think young men who were 18, 19, 20, and 21 years of age would be able to do that. Well, we got back from class and ended up in my, in my dorm room, friendly game of cards. Well, we were having fun. Workout time was 3.30. It got to 3.30, and we thought, well, we've got a little leverage here, a little leadway, because, you know, coach isn't here. He's not going to be waiting on the track. We can get this done before dinner. The card game was really good. Well, 4 o'clock came. We decided we'd stick it out, 4.15. 4.30 came. We were still playing cards. And then this knock came. He said he was going to be gone. He didn't say he was going to be late. I opened the door. And there was his face. He had never looked at me like that before. And he, he said my name, and he told me things. I didn't know he knew those things about me, and I didn't agree with those things. And then he went after the other guys. And he told us to, to get ourselves out there. And we went through about two or three times what the normal scheduled workout was going to be. But I was very ashamed that he showed up that day at my door, but I didn't expect him. And Christ is coming back. And we are going to be accountable for all these riches that he's entrusted in our lap. And Satan is trying to keep us from spending them. He's trying to keep us distracted. You know, I don't even remember what hand I had when, when he showed up. When Christ shows up, you may think, well, I'm holding a royal flush. It doesn't matter. All the cards were left on the table. Whether you had one pair or you had a royal flush. I just told you what kind of cards we were playing. <laughs> this was before. This was before. But it's all going to be left. It's not going to matter anymore when you're out there dealing with the consequences of his coming back. You know, what kind of day would it be today if Christ came back today? Would you be ashamed and embarrassed? You know, 1 Corinthians chapter 3 talks about those who when, when life was over and they went to judgment, that the only thing they had that had eternal value was themselves that Christ bought and paid for. Everything of this world burned up and, it, and the language is there that they came into heaven with the smell of smoke on them that everything they lived for in this life just was consumed in judgment. And the only thing that wasn't was themselves because Christ paid for that. 2 Corinthians 5.10 says we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may receive the things done in the body according to what he has done, whether good or bad. Some of us are going to be like Sodom or like Lot, watching Sodom and Gomorrah go up in smoke. Someone said it this way, what we weave in time, we will wear through eternity. What are you weaving right now? What are you fashioning for yourself to put on when you get into heaven? 